Next testifiers would be uh, Mr. Uh, Clay and Mr. Durbin. Uh, Mr. Clay, of course, executive director with uh, PSERS, uh, Pennsylvania. Um, and then uh, Mr. Durbin is with SERS, the uh, state system. School system, state system, the retirement uh, systems. Mr. Clay, if you'd like to kick it off. And yes, I'll start. And um, again, good morning, uh, Chairman Metcalf, uh, Chairman Cohen, members of the House State Government Committee. Uh, I am Jeffrey Clay, the Executive Director of the Public School Employees Retirement System. Also with me is uh, James Grossman, PISA's uh, Chief Investment Officer, and we do welcome the opportunity to be here today. Be uh, before I actually start my formal comments, I do want to thank the uh, previous uh, testifiers for providing additional information that's going to help us in our due diligence process here, so I do thank them for that. Uh, 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 continue with my uh, formal testimony. PISERS takes its fiduciary duties quite seriously and, is, uh, and as such it constantly seeks new and innovative ways to serve and protect the interests of our beneficiaries. With respect to the subject of today's hearing, these efforts include carefully monitoring the domestic equity trading operations. In fact, PISERS has for many years retained a professional consultant to do so. Uh, Zeno Consulting Group LLC currently serves in this capacity. As you know, uh, SecureX Services LLC recently approached members of the uh, Pennsylvania legislature and according to news reports has also contacted other legislative bodies across the country to introduce her services as a, marine, a means to recover possible stock trade through violations of the Security and Exchange Commission rules. PISERS has not been uh, approached directly by uh, SIRX. Nonetheless, PISERS willingly, uh, uh, remains willing to consider details of the potential analysis if they desire to submit it to us uh, and to take appropriate action if a compelling business case is developed. Although PISERS has not been contacted by SecureX before this hearing, we have had numerous recent conversations with consultants, investment managers, and other service providers uh, concerning SecureX claims. We have also begun a dialogue directly with the SEC on this matter and requested a parallel dialogue with FINRA. Uh, I will briefly summarize our findings to date. Uh, we have thus far been unable to document any case uh, where the kind of a forensic analysis promoted uh, to the legislature by SecureX have been successful in providing benefit to any large pension, public pension system. Uh, further, SEC Rule 611, noted by SecureX, is a compliance rule and does not specifically call for punitive damage or restitution to market participants. It is therefore currently unclear at this point under what legal precedent that recovery of possible damages to PEASERS is possible. Neither exchanges nor broker-dealers have any fiduciary duty to PEASERS and appear to have no legal obligation to provide data to us. We are therefore concerned that they may not choose to voluntarily cooperate in compiling the vast quantities of data that appear to be necessary uh, for the SecureX strategy or whether a regulatory body such as the SEC would compel them to do so. However, the SEC has confirmed to us their oversight rule in this regard and that there are relevant uh, precedents for the SEC to conduct investigations based on information provided to them from the market participants or whistleblowers. It is not clear uh, whether if we assume that PEASERS has been a victim of trade through violations and can substantiate its claims, harm to PEASERS has been of such a significant nature to warrant the cost of the audit and legal recovery efforts against multiple brokers. While PEASERS, of course, should pursue any instances of viable claims that it can assert uh, the materiality and the viability of the potential claims in this case are far from certain. It is not possible for PEASERS at this time to accurately predict fees that will be incurred by PEASERS to retain the services of SecureX, including its nominal fee to cover its quant costs for a full 60-month audit, the cost of its legal partners used to recover funds that may be owed or the amount of SecureX share of the recovery revenue. In addition to these costs, we will need to carefully quantify the potentially substantial burden on PEASER staff, time, and resources to undertake this type of project, as well as the possibility that PEASERs would be obligated to pay fees or other expenses regardless of any monetary or any recovery received or realized. In short, in keeping with PEASERs fiduciary duty, a prudence, a full cost benefit analysis would be, need to be made before engaging SecureX. These concerns do not mean that PISAS is unwilling to undertake the project proposed to you by SecureX. As you can see, additional analysis needs to, be occur, uh, needs to occur before you can determine whether that what action is in the best interest of our members. We intend to continue to obtain additional information, 
to make a fully informed uh, business decision. Thank you again for the opportunity to appear before you today, Mr. Grossman. I'll be happy to answer any questions you may have. We also note that a representative from Zeno Consulting Group, LLC, is also present to assist you. Thank you. Mr. Clay, it uh, surprises me a little bit that the focus of your testimony seems to be uh, SecureX more than it is the nature of the issue that we were discussing today that the resolution is written about. And that's related to the pricing and, and, the, and the best price and these, these trades that are being made that we may be shorted in. Um, so I, as you think about that for the q and A, I'd really like your thoughts on the issue in a resolution rather than on this company that gave testimony today. It's really not between you and them. This is between you and us as fiduciaries. We want to make sure that if we're, get, we're getting shortchanged, we want to make sure that our systems are capturing it. So I really want your thoughts on the issue, not on SecureX. And I think a lot of my colleagues would probably concur. Um, Mr. Durbin, if you could lend some uh, testimony to the issue um, rather than SecureX, we'd appreciate it. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. I am Dave Durbin, the Executive Director of the State Employees Retirement System. To my right is Tom Breyer, SERS Acting Chief Investment Officer. As you know, during SERS and PSERS budget hearing, Representative Mustio introduced the notion that there may be new technology to potentially allow investors to more accurately identify when a stock trade is not executed within the Security and Exchange Commission's National Best Bid and Offer NBBO framework. And we thank you, Representative Mustio, for bringing this to our attention. As H.R. 701 rightly indicates, SERS has a fiduciary duty to its members. It's an obligation that we take very seriously. On any given day, SERS staff is actively investigating the performance of current and potential investment managers, as well as researching ideas, products, and services that may help improve our stewardship. Thus, it was the natural application of our day-to-day -day commitment that caused us to begin research shortly after the hearing. Specific to today, HR 701 encourages SERS to embrace new technology that purports to be able to identify stock trading price violations. Once identified, there is an implication that it will be easy to recover sums related to each transaction. As we understand it, the technology is designed to scrutinize trades covered by the SEC's Reg NMS Rule 611, a complex framework for stock exchanges and firms regulated by the Financial Industry Regulatory Authority, or FINRA. A lot of acronyms this morning. The SEC and the exchange's compliance functions are vigilant in identifying and correcting violations. In fact, in January of 2013, the SEC rolled out its own market information data analytics system, otherwise known as MIDAS. Among other things, it uses microsecond timestamps to analyze orders and quotes on national exchanges, as well as trade executions against those orders. Admittedly, our research has not been comprehensive, but we think it's important to let you know that so far, we have yet to un undercover evidence that would support the claims of large-scale unaddressed violations. In the past weeks, we've scanned a number of sources and have so far found very little litigation in this area, none specifically related to Reg NMS, which is suggested as being so prevalent, and none including a public pension plan. We did find three SEC administrative matters, two against exchanges and one against a broker. FINRA's online database revealed one disciplinary action in order a company to pay restitution for failing to provide customers with best execution in certain transactions. We've also reached out to the industry associations and our peer networks. To date, we have received no responses to indicate that others sense that the NBBO violations are occurring unchecked. We heard from some states that looked into technology-based offerings but decided not to move forward, either because they believed their current monitoring scenario to be providing sufficient risk mitigation or because they had not identified a vendor that met the due diligence criteria they employ to meet their fiduciary standard, particularly as related to relevant references and evidences of success. None of this is to say that violations do not occur. I am sure they do. Even when all parties act in good faith, mistakes can be, can be made, and dynamic markets evolve rapidly. I think you might be interested at a very high level knowing just a little bit more about how uh, the safeguards that SERS has in place to monitor and address potential problems. Our first line of defense, our first line of defense is an aggressive offense. 
we go after, as fiduciaries, the very best companies that we can find with which to invest our funds. Our standard due diligence process related to any manager who may invest in the public markets is multifaceted. One key component is an 18-page set of questions which seeks to uncover evidence related to matters such as the history and outcomes of regulatory reviews, order management systems, trade execution quality monitoring process, trade cost analysis, examples of error correction, compliance monitoring, exception reporting, you get the idea. We're pretty thorough with that. And I'd be happy to share a copy of that with the committee if you think that would be helpful, sir. Even after we do verify that we're engaging high quality managers, we don't take it on faith that everything's going to work the way it ought to. We verify. In 2011, after a competitive bid, Surge renewed its contract with the firm Abel Noser to provide third party monitoring of trade execution, quality, and trader commissions. The firm performs a detailed analysis of equity trade data against the volume weighted average price prevailing across Surge trades on a quarterly basis. The foundation for their review is a broad data set that includes every Surge transaction that occurred during the quarter as provided by our custodial bank. In this respect, Surge uses an industry standard practice. Uh, of monitoring execution levels related to market benchmarks and total commission costs. It is crucial in identifying anomaly trends that emerge either by security, by broker, or by manager. Surge's so execution performance has ranked in the top quartile when compared to all peers in the Abel Noser universe. During the contract period so far, Abel Noser has evaluated more than 500 million uh, shares traded on domestic changes and has flagged fewer than 10 situations that warranted additional scrutiny. To be clear, there are many reasons that a trade could appear to be out of compliance, but, and I think this is the crucial point, appearance alone does not confirm the presence of a violation itself. HR 701 asserts that as many as 7.5% of all stocks shares have NBBO violations and cites $20 billion in documented cases between 2008 and 2013. Representative Mustio's budget hearing questions asserted that about 2.3 cents, if I think I remember correctly, sir, uh, per violation is recoverable, and SERS has not been able at this point to, to independently verify those facts, uh, nor uh, are we comfortable with the implicit validation of damages that they imply. Additional research uh, related to both data and methodology is necessary. That being said, we understand and we share your interest in ensuring that our pension system is retaining every possible dollar. Surge is committed to exploring opportunities that have the potential to help us become an even more efficient operation. Several weeks ago, we reached out to and set up a meeting with a potential vendor. Unfortunately, uh, the vendor canceled subject to negotiation of uh, non-disclosure agreements, which we're still in the process of completing. Uh, we are working through those issues now, and we will continue to move forward in the coming weeks. Thank you.